So which tomb world do your Necrons hail from? Today we're talking the merits of our Soltex and our Nyarthax with a general overview of the Necron dynasties. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're going to be talking through the main Necron dynasties with a little bit of lore and background on the big six and a discussion of their use in game with their various special rules, relics, stratagems and warlord traits. If you're just starting out with Necrons then hopefully this might give a bit of an overview and hopefully might inspire you to go down one path or another. Let's jump right into it then with a look at the Nihilak dynasty. So the Nihilak dynasty are aggressively territorial. Unlike many re-emergent Necron tomb worlds, they have not sought to conquer or take territory from the other races and are far more focused on absolutely purging their territory of any of the lesser races. Their vast treasure hoard planets are legendary amongst the other dynasties and should any interlopers stray into their territory they will be attacked mercilessly until they are utterly destroyed. I think their colour scheme is really quite fun as well, they've got a bit of an ancient Egyptian theme going on. These guys very much seem to be the tomb kings in space. In game their dynastic code is quite a good one, aggressively territorial gives every single unit obsec and their troops units will count as being two models for the purposes of capturing objectives. In 9th edition smashing the opponent off objectives is all important and if you can throw obsec on really durable units such as necron wraiths or even things like vehicles and ghost arcs which might be a pain to deal with then you're in for a good time and your opponents are going to struggle to take objectives off you. The second part of their code is a bit weaker, it allows you to ignore AP-1 when you're within your own deployment zone which is a bit niche to be honest. I think it's not really worth trying to remain in your own deployment zone to try and get advantage of it and a lot of weapons won't be AP-1 so you won't get any durability benefit. I personally pretty much ignore it and just treat it as a nice to have if and when it comes up. They get both parts of the Eternal Guardian protocol, so that's light cover if they didn't move, and also 5 plus overwatch or plus 1 to hit when they're charged if they want it. To be honest, not one of the best ones to have both of. Their stratagem is Reclaim at a Lost Empire, which allows you to shoot as well as doing an action, which could potentially be fairly useful. They'll be quite well suited to doing things like raising banners on objectives. Their Warlord trait allows them to fight first in the fight phase, which is a bit underwhelming in my opinion. And their relic is a toughness one, giving them plus one to their saving throw, and also a six plus feel no pain type save. For me, the main reason to use this dynasty is the obsec. It's a really powerful rule, and might very well make the difference between winning and losing games. Next up we have the Mephrit dynasty, the shooty ones. In the background, the Mephrit are famed for their manipulation of stars, possessing technology that can send a star supernova that was deployed en masse in the war in heaven. They somehow power their weapons with energy drained from stars, and can deploy far greater firepower than many other dynasties. Their Faeron was assassinated in the Great Sleep, following intervention from the Eldar, though a certain Zarathustra the Ineffable has risen to prominence within the dynasty. In game they get AP better by minus one within half range, and they get plus three inch range on their weapons. Certainly two nice little buffs, I think that the AP being better by one is probably the better of the two, and it's actually going to be more useful on the low AP weapons within half range, particularly things like Gauss Flayers. Having AP-2 when you're in rapid fire is really quite nice. Their protocol is the Ventral Stars which really fits well with their theme. It means they also ignore cover within half range and any wound rolls of a 6 get an additional extra minus 1 AP. When they're in that one, Gauss Flayers and things are going to cut through armour like nobody's business. Their stratagem is also very good on things like Gauss Flayers again. Talent for Annihilation gives you wound rolls of 6 translating to mortal wounds, though it is unfortunately capped at a maximum of 3 per phase probably best deployed on a big squad of warriors or something like a ghost arc with a ton of gauss flares. Their warlord trait is fairly decent, they get plus one strength and plus one attack, nice simple and uncomplicated will really make a fighty character that bit more dangerous, and the relic is an upgraded version of the warden's gauss blaster where it jumps up to rapid fire 3 and strength 6, honestly not really all that big a difference in my opinion. If you like all things shooty then the mephrit could be for you, I think they particularly synergize well with tesla weapons with that extra AP and mass ranks of warriors or ghost arcs and things with gauss flares. It's kind of hard to go too far wrong with increased range damage. Next up we have the Sotek dynasty. These are your classic silver, black and green necrons, the ones that were kind of the poster boys for the faction for quite a while until this new Zarakan dynasty turned up. They're arguably the most powerful dynasty at the moment, many of their tomb worlds survive the great sleep, and their Faeron Imitech the Stormlord in a relentless drive of conquest to purge the lesser races from the galaxy. Interestingly enough, in game their dynastic code I think is really quite weak, but they have good options with their stratagem and warlord traits which kind of make up for it. Relentless advance is really quite niche as it gives them rapid fire at 18 inches and re-roll morale. 
To be honest, I'm very underwhelmed by the 18-inch rapid fire. It's only really very meaningful on Necron Warriors with Gauss Flayers, and things like Ghost Arcs and Doomsday Arcs who also have Gauss Flayer arrays. It can technically be useful on things like Immortals and Tomb Blades, but they already have 30-inch range Gauss Blasters, and to be honest, the increase from 15 inches to 18 inches I don't think is all that meaningful. The second part is a bit of a dud as well. B-rolling morale tests when your entire faction is leadership 10 is a bit meh. You're very unlikely to fail leadership anyway, and even if you do, it isn't all that devastating in 9th edition. Their command protocol is the Conquering Tyrant, so that's plus 3 inches to aura abilities, and you also get to fall back and shoot on top of that, so it could be useful if any of your phalanxes are getting tied up in the midfield. But I'd say that their stratagem, Methodical Destruction, for 2 command points is one of the better reasons to play them. Basically you just have to have a Sotek unit declare any shooting at all at one enemy unit, and then you can use this stratagem even if they don't kill any models. For the rest of the phase you get plus 1 to hit in the shooting phase of the entire army, meaning that if the enemy does have one big scary unit that you absolutely want to delete with extreme prejudice, then it allows you to sort of put them under the lens and really focus a lot of really powerful guns at them. Certainly not a bad one, though it does have some overlap with my will be done, which could lead to a bit of redundancy. Their Warlord trait's pretty good as well, it's the 5 plus command point refunding one, and I'd certainly be very tempted to use it if I was playing this dynasty. Their relic is the Vanquisher's Mask, which allows you to make an enemy unit fight last when it's within 3 inches, and that is actually really quite powerful, maybe stick it on something strong like a Scorpec Lord, and you'll make him very safe from enemy units trying to charge him. Finally, and another really good reason to play Sotek, is the fact that they have quite a lot of their own unique special characters. Imitek the Stormlord, Thargard Oberon, and Nemesor Zandrek are all Sotek models, and it's always nice to have a few more options. Power-wise, I think their trait's one of the weakest, and I'm not sure you really want to be using these guys unless you are fielding quite a lot of rapid fire, but their stratagem, warlord trait, and special characters are okay. Next up we have the Nephrek Dynasty. These are golden armored Necron warriors, with their capital established in the Galactic Core and the lofty ambitions of transcending this mere material plane to become beings of pure light. Their arcane technology allows them to translocate short distances in a flash of golden light, and even phase through solid objects and rock creep bunkers while they're doing so. In recent times, the dynasty has been engaged at war with the Thousand Sons since the opening of the Great Rift, who are attempting to steal the power of harnessing the Catan from the Necron dynasty. In-game, I'm afraid they're not one of the strongest ones at the moment. They do get a 6 plus inball save, which is okay, largely going to be best on things with a low save such as Necron Warriors, and their phasing ability allows them to auto-advance 6 inches and essentially teleport through solid objects and enemy models while they do so. The problem is that it says that they can't shoot or charge after they've done this, so gaining the extra movement isn't all that great to be honest, and I'm honestly not sure that the extra small amount of movement that you get is really worth it to give up this opportunity. Their protocol is the protocol of the sudden storm, giving them a little bit of a mobility boost perhaps early in the game, they get plus one movement and can still shoot weapons while they're doing actions such as raising banners, which I guess is moderately helpful. I'd say the single best thing about the dynasty is their stratagem, which allows you to pay one command point to deep strike non-vehicle, non-monster units. Being able to deep strike things wherever really is quite nice. I think it could be particularly quite fun on Gauss Reaper Necron Warriors, guaranteeing that they're going to be able to get in 12 inch strike range, and I feel like this could be one of the stronger ways to use the dynasty. The Warlord traits are fairly passable minus one to hit, not terrible but not exactly outstanding either, and their relic is the Solar Staff, a boosted Staff of Light with Assault 6, Strength 5, AP minus 2, Damage 1, and enemy units that are hit can't overwatch or set to defend. Wouldn't be one of my top choices. I'm afraid despite having some pretty cool backstory, these guys aren't all that great in game, the main advantage being Deep Strike. Next up we have the Zarakan Dynasty the new bronze-coloured one unveiled by Games Workshop themselves for the new edition, and the personal dynasty of Zarek the Silent King himself. The Zarekan dynasty were slow to awaken following the Silent King's return from the intergalactic void, and they lost many tomb worlds both to enemy incursion and raids from other dynasties. Now awakened once more, the Silent King is beginning to exert his authority on the nearby Necron dynasties, and setting his famously powerful cryptex to work, who are both masters of Blackstone and Reanimation. In game, their code does give another flat damage boost. Every time a unit makes an attack, you get to re-roll a wound roll, which is honestly really good if you're playing with multiple small Necron units, particularly things like Locust Heavy Destroyers. You also get a 5 plus Feel No Pain type save against mortal wounds, which is a bit niche, but certainly helps in some matchups. Their protocol is the protocol of the Undying Legions, the one that both boosts your reanimation protocols and allows Living Metal to heal two wounds rather than one, which is really quite a good one to get both on the go at the same time, to be honest. 
and between their warlord trait and relic, then the masters are manipulating these command protocols. Their warlord trait allows you to use one command protocol twice, which means you can really tailor your army to get the most advantage out of one, as you get to have it on two consecutive turns. On top of that, their relic allows a 9-inch aura of command protocols taking effect around the character, and those units again gain both effects of the command protocol, which does allow you a fair bit more consistent planning as to which units are going to gain what buffs. Their stratagem is pretty decent, with denying a psychic power within 18 inches on the roll of a 4+, plus, always handy to have in your back pocket in the case of scary ones. And of course they do have access to none other than the Silent King himself, we've already covered him on the channel in another video. He certainly is a lot of points, but he brings a ton of powerful abilities to the table, and I think he will be seeing play. Overall, I'd say they're a fairly strong dynasty, the wound rerolls are good, as are their trait, relic, and stratagem. Finally, for the major dynasties, we have Novok, the close combat focused ones. The Novok dynasty is a brutal militaristic one, with a tradition of daubing themselves in the blood of their fallen foes, which is why their head and pauldrons are painted red. They're aggressive and expansionist, and are constantly warring against nearby orc empires, and their exploits recently brought them into contact with Mortarion, who unleashed the Ferric Blight upon them, the plague laying waste to several tomb worlds. In game, these guys really go all in on the close combat strategy. They get plus one to charge, which means eight inch charges out of deep strike, which is very nice, and also the AP of their combat weapons is improved by one on the first round of close combat. Both really solid buffs for a close combat army, the AP being particularly useful on things with low AP, Flayed Ones being one of the units that can perhaps have the most synergy with the dynasty. Doubling down on this, they get both parts of the protocol of the Hungry Boys, that's both plus one strength and another pip of AP minus one on sixes, which means that they're going to have a turn of absolute carnage. As if that weren't enough, their Blood Riot Stratagem can give you plus one attack to a unit for one command point, and this could get really significant if you did manage to get a big unit in combat with them, whether it's a big unit of Flayed Ones, maybe 10 Lich Guard, or even something like a unit of Necron Warriors with AP-1 on the charge could be actually genuinely quite scary with this. Their Warlord trait's a bit underwhelming to be honest, it just inflicts an extra mortal wound on the wound roll of a 6, which is a bit pointless in my opinion. But their Blood Scythe Relic is really quite interesting, it's basically a normal War Scythe, but it gives the character an extra 2 attacks, and it's going to be pretty much the ideal weapon for chewing through enemy Space Marine intercessors and things. Overall, I think that Novok are really quite a cool dynasty, brutal melee buffs are really quite cool, and they're certainly going to be the go-to for any sort of melee-built Necron army. Finally, you do have the option of building your own dynasty. You can either make your own Faeron and Law, or pick a minor dynasty with set rules, such as the Xanathor or Tsarakira dynasties, which I remember seeing them preview colour schemes for recently. In-game, you do have some trade-offs, you don't get any unique protocol bonus, relic, trait, or stratagem, and of course no special characters. What you do get for that though, is being able to pick a dynastic tradition, and then a circumstance of awakening. In the future, I'm hoping to go through the list in a bit more detail, but for now, here's just a few of them. The dynastic tradition can give you Obsec, which is arguably the best thing about the Nihilak dynasty, or the Zarkin style wound roll rerolls, or plus one to charge similar to Novok. The circumstances of awakening really do seem quite powerful, there's one that really stands out, which allows all units to pre-game move 6 inches, which is honestly pretty great for no matter what Necron army you're playing, if you're a melee one, then you can get that much closer to the enemy. If you're a ranged one, then you can potentially hide out of line of sight turn one, and then use this pre-game move to get them into position. I'd argue it's probably the strongest of this list, but there's also lots of other good ones. There's a melee buff where sixes to hit automatically wound infantry and bikes that you're in combat with. There's the Mephrit plus three inches to ranged weapons, which could be pretty handy in combination with that wound roll reroll for a very shooty dynasty. There's a buff for plus one strength to ranged weapons when you're less than half range away from them. And if you're playing with a bunch of vehicles, there's one to allow them to fall back and shoot. Lots of strong options here, and I think they've done quite well with this table. I must admit, pre-game moves combined with obsec or re-rolling those wound rolls seems very nice to me. So I hope that's been of some help to talk through the various dynasty options. For me, I think the vast majority of them are very playable indeed. For me, my favourites are competitively, Novok, Mephrid and Sotek, and also the custom dynasty with obsec. For me, the Sotek and Nefrek traits are just a little bit weak, and Nihilak to me just doesn't really seem to offer all that much on top of the obsec, which you can get in a custom dynasty alongside other more powerful rules. Even though I think that some are stronger than others though, I do think there are advantages to all of them, even Nefrek has their teleport stratagem. So let me know what are your favourite dynasties and why down in the comments below, it'll certainly be interesting to hear Necron players' ideas on their choices. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where we'll certainly have plenty of other Necron videos coming over the next few weeks, so subscribe or check back if you'd like to see more. 
Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Making all these videos does take quite a bit of time, so if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is massively appreciated. There are another few benefits for patrons, including getting early access to videos, regular votes to see what sort of videos come next on the channel, and entry to the monthly prize draw with a chance to win some big kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.